How's it going? I was gonna come plow you out, but you looks like you already got it. I'll take care of it. two passes what would take you guys three hours. Ah! Barbara, she's our next neighbor up to the up, up the road. So her and her sister live together over there, and they're out there trying to plow snow, and they don't they're having I've all sorts of road, yeah. sorts of trouble. I don't think this has probably been serviced since he passed away. Mm -hmm. Just give it a once over, uh, hit all the grease search, fill it up with diesel, just check everything out, um, make sure that 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 this is all lubed up, so it's easy easy for her to use. Yeah, just kind of give it the once over and get an eye on everything, check all the fluids and. If there's anything missing, just add it. While we're on kind of a snow and winter theme here, I wanted to share with you guys the best winter tires, period. Uh, and they're made by Nokian. I found these a few years ago. They were recommended uh, by a friend of mine. We live uh, pretty high, so we drive, we're driving in snow and ice all winter long. Um, all, and we spend a lot of time going up and down to, to the mountain for skiing. So driving in snow is a constant thing with us. These tires are amazing, and, it, and I'll show you why here. Let me bring you up close. These are the Nokian Hakapolitas. These are made, uh, I think they're made in Finland, and I believe Nokian invented snow tires, and there is so much that goes into these. I knew they were good. I mean, I've, I've had them for three seasons now, but yesterday when we were in probably some of the worst driving condition I've ever been in, uh, just a massive storm up at, up at the mountain, uh, I got to see people, how vehicles were handling in those conditions. And there were guys uh, in four wheel drives with winter tires on, slipping around, having all sorts of problems. And we were like, it was like for us being on the middle of summer. If you're lucky enough to have uh, I live in a place where you can have studs. Um, studs are just amazing, especially these. These are totally different than normal ones. If you look at most studs, they're a little, they're kind of the shape of like a mountain, a little peak. And after the first season, they, they start to wear down. They're really soft and they just basically fall apart and don't do much good. The Nokians have, I can only assume that it's something really hard, like maybe a piece of carbide, a little triangle in there that just doesn't wear out. And these are half as noisy as your normal studs. You know, you hear them clicking along because they actually have a little suspension, a little shock absorber thing underneath of them. These are installed from the factory. They're not put into the tire store and they don't throw. And the way that they're laid out, they're not, there's not two right together where you could have problems. You've got siping on there. You've got all, you've got the special compound. I mean, they're just, <laughs> they're just amazing. I didn't, I was kind of playing around yesterday and I got out of a huge snowbank and I didn't even have to put it in four wheel drive. So if you're looking for good winter tires, 
these are the best I've ever used. Something else I saw last night was the storm was blowing and was icing and snowing so hard up at the mountain when people were coming back, their cars were buried. They didn't have any shovels, so I loaned my shovel to a couple different people. Also, they weren't able to get in their cars because the locks had frozen up. In the wintertime, I always carry a, a Bic lighter. You never know when I might have a, a desire for one of my Virginia Slims. Uh, carry a lighter with you when you're in cold and icy environment. You can heat that key up. Just heat it up. A little bit get it hot not red hot you know but heat it up just one or two times you'll be able to push it right in there and it'll unlock that door uh, usually just straight away before I put the wax on your ski I'll, I'll clean it with a, a an alcohol make sure that there's no crud or dirt anything in there that's gonna get kind of mixed in with the max the max the wax then I'll take a fine scotch bright pad um, and just scuff it really quick knock off any little surface rust or just any issues and that will melt on there and I'll just kind of a crisp, just an S pattern there. While that wax is cooling, you can see the wet areas. We're gonna use a plastic scraper. Now here's something that a lot of guys don't do. You wanna have a nice, clean, sharp edge on it. I have a bevel tool that I use for edging snowboards there, but any, any way you can get a 90 degree edge on that, make that sharp. I'll take that and flip that over on that file. That gives you a nice sharp edge on there. So I only use this for scraping the base. Once that dries a little bit, it's still a little bit hot, but we'll basically just, we're going to scrape it all, scrape it down to the edges. Now here's the important part and my secret and the reason why my skis are always faster than all my friends. <laughs> This little brush right here. It's got a, a thick, it's got a really heavy brush right here and a felt pad on it. So a lot of guys will stop right here with the scraping, but I'll take and I'll use this brush right here and I'll polish this. And you can see, almost see a dust on there. That, what that's doing is that's really pressing that wax down into the grooves, into the base. So I'll scrape this really get good and get that nice and consistent. Then I'll take this felt and I'll buff it like that just takes just a couple extra minutes. But what you have right there is you just have this beautiful, smoothest glass finish uh, that is super fast and just makes, makes the ski just go like crazy. Good to go. What are you doing? I'm pushing on boots. Are you going out into the snow? Are you going to learn how to ski this year? What's that? That's Papa's EDC flashlight. It has a bad design and a bad switch that turns on all the time in his pocket. Oh, but we're not drawing. We're going outside. Outside right now. Okay. We've actually renamed our dog. <laughs> She's now Goosey. It's Goosey Goo! Goosey. It's Goosey Goo, Papa. I like Goosey Goo. I thank you, pardon. <laughs> you beg my pardon? I beg your pardon. This is so funny. Mrs. W and I were always talking about how specialized and how fancy everything's getting. You know, what was okay just a few years ago, you know, now, of course, it has to be improved upon. Here's a sled I made for the Sweet Loaf a few years ago. This is uh, 18th century technology, right? It was good enough for hundreds of years. <laughs> Fast forward to 2020. Here's a modern sled. Sled from the past, modern sled. Suspension, skis, full weather... <laughs> <laughs> with their protection. <laughs> Is it any wonder why we're getting softer as a, uh, as a, 
as a species. 